Hi folks, uh, in this video I'm going to go through the process in R of how to fit a linear regression model where we have a grouping variable and a numerical predictor for every case in our data set. Uh, the data I'm going to be using here is the data on baseball salaries and uh, batting average that we saw in class. So I'll go ahead and import that uh, and it's sitting right here on my computer. It's in baseballsalary.csv. You can get that from the class website. So I open that up. Uh, and it looks like R is making a slight mistake here and that we need to remind it that it's got a header row. So we do, and sure enough, there it understands. So our three columns here are our baseball player salary on a log 10 scale, that player's batting average, uh, you know, 336, 2310, etc., and then what class of, of uh, league they're in, AA, AAA, or the major leagues. Those are the three uh, professional leagues that we're talking about here. Okay, so we import, and now we've got uh, that data ready uh, at our disposal. First things first, let me load the Mosaic library that has a lot of useful commands. And then let me just plot the data. So if I just plot salary versus batting average for every case in the data set, you're going to notice a very strange relationship here. Uh, namely, that as batting average goes up, salary tends to go down. And so we could fit a least squares regression line to this uh, using the command here on line 5. You'll find this script, by the way, uh, under uh, baseballsalary.r on the course website. So we'll just uh, be naive here and ignore the grouping variable fitting a linear model. We could ask for the summary of that linear model and get the estimates, <coughs> excuse me, and the standard errors uh, under the normal linear regression model assumptions. What we notice is that there seems to be a negative slope associated with batting average. And if you wanted to, uh, you know, you could just put <coughs> AB line LM1 up here, uh, and you would get the line appearing on the plot. So that, that uh, seeming paradox can be explained by the following. Uh, let's look now at log 10 salary versus batting average, except stratified by class. And we use the xy plot, uh, which is uh, buried inside the Mosaic library. That's going to take salary, plot it against batting average, but do a separate plot for uh, AAA, AA, and major leagues. And here it is. Let me zoom in so you can see this a bit better. So you notice that within each league, AA, AAA, and major leagues, it's quite clear that there's a you know, loose positive relationship between batting average and salary. Uh, it's only when we aggregate that we see this paradox that uh, batting average seems to predict a lower salary. Uh, so we call this an aggregation paradox in class, uh, and the way we decided how to resolve this was instead of to fit one regression line for the whole data set, to disaggregate and fit separate lines within each leak. So I'm going to show you how to do that very succinctly here in R. Okay, the way we do that is using uh, this device I introduced in class called dummy variables. Right, And, and just to remind you uh, of where we would uh, read about that, if you go to page 132 through 134 in class, I've got, uh, in, rather in the course packet, I've got all about dummy variables. Uh, these hark back to the material on baseline offset form for expressing uh, group means when we go back to just simple group-wise models. So I kind of build up from dummy variables for group means uh, to dummy variables when we've got more than one category or more than, I'm sorry, more than, uh, more than two levels within a single category, uh, as we do in this case. Uh, and then what happens if now we take that basic group-wise model uh, and we add a continuous predictor. Okay, so just to, to refresh your memory, that's where you would find the material on dummy variables and, aggr and uh, aggregation and regression models. Let's go back to R and show you how to fit a model like this. So it's very simple. We've got two predictors. One is batting average, that's the numerical predictor. One is class, uh, which is AA, AAA major leagues. Uh, it refers to a class of baseball uh, professional league that the, the player is in. So uh, the way to incorporate both of those terms into the regression model is simply to add them as one plus the other on the right-hand side of this formula statement right here. So that highlighted bit says, fit a linear model, model log 10 salary as the response, and model it in terms of batting average and class. And those are variables that you can find in baseball salary. So let's execute that command, ask for the summary of the model, drag this up just a touch right here, and you're going to get some coefficients here. You get an intercept, uh, you get a coefficient associated with batting average, which is now positive, by the way. Before it was negative, now it's positive. And then you get two coefficients associated with dummy variables. One coefficient associated with class AAA, and one coefficient associated with the major leagues. Now the way to read these, this is the intercept for the missing category. You notice there's no variable associated with class AA, that's the baseline. Uh, just arbitrarily, AA comes first. Uh, in R's scheme for ordering the, uh, the categories here. It's because it comes first alphabetically, so it's the baseline. Uh, and then we have an offset for AAA and an offset for major leagues. So there's three different regression models, they have three different intercepts, and they all have the same slope on the batting average variable. Let's just check that by I. Okay? 
uh, and I'm going to come back here to what's on line 16 through 18 in a moment here, but I just want to check that the baseline offset uh, form makes sense. So I'm just going to plot the AAA subset right here. So instead of plotting log 10 salary for batting average for the whole data set, I'm going to plot it for this particular subset uh, where the class is AAA. Notice the double equal sign here to pass uh, as the subset command. Okay, so let me plot that right here. There it is. You notice the expected positive trend. <clears throat> and now if we go back to the summary up here, you notice that what's the slope? Well, there's the slope, 5.69. If we want to get the intercept for AAA, here's what we do. We take the baseline, uh, which is the intercept for AA, and we add the AAA offset. So that's exactly what I've done right here. I've taken the baseline, 2.75 and change, added to it the offset, 1.03 and change, and called that the intercept of the line I want to add. And here's the slope right there, 5.69. And you see if I add that line to the plot, I get the least squares line for that particular group. The, and it looks quite reasonable. Here's the intercept, there's the slope, and that uh, quite obviously describes the, the salary versus batting average relationship reasonably well uh, within uh, the AAA subset. Okay. I just want to show you uh, what happens uh, if you if you wanted to get the means. Uh, you know, so so what I've emphasized here is that this summary reports the group intercepts in baseline offset form, baseline, and then the offsets for the other two groups. Uh, if you actually wanted to get the uh, intercepts straight up, you could do it. And the way to add that, and this is going to be not quite uh, easy to understand, but just just treat it as a command that you do if you want this. If you want to get the intercepts straight up rather than in baseline offset form you can add this minus 1 to the end of the formula statement. So if you compare LM2, you've just got batting average plus class. Uh, this says batting average plus class minus 1, and that's just a, a code to R to tell it don't fit a baseline. Instead, report a separate intercept for each group. Uh, that's most easily seen by example here. So let me fit the model and ask for the summary. And what you're going to notice here is now I don't have an intercept. Now I have a slope for batting average and then three separate intercepts for the three classes. So this is uh, reporting in straight up form, the other is baseline offset form. And just to make sure, you know, what is the intercept for class AAA? There it is, it's 3.7931. And if we go back down here and we take the original baseline and the original offset from baseline offset form and we add them together, what you're going to notice is we recover precisely that 3.7931, etc. right there. Okay, so just two different ways of expressing exactly the same information. One is straight up, one is in baseline offset or dummy variable form. Uh, material that we didn't cover in class uh, included material on in interaction terms, uh, and we'll get to that next week. So uh, what we've covered today is the basics of dummy variables, how to fit those models in R, and how to interpret those dummy variables from the regression output. Again, I want to emphasize that the kind of output that comes standard as R uh, from R, if you ask it to model numerical predictor against a uh, quantitative predictor, and uh, rather a numerical response against a numerical predictor and a grouping variable, you get the results reported just like this in baseline offset form. Uh, so that's going to be useful for problems number uh, problem number three, parts A and B on the fifth set of exercises.